180 k's to go. Pagacha attacking Jonas. We could barely believe it at the start of this stage. It was supposed to be. This is always a breakaway stage to Mond. We had Steve Cummings hit, win here before. Roglic did a really good performance in 2018. 192.5. Extremely hot kilometers. Temperatures up to 40 degrees. There's up and down climbs all day. They start with a climb before the climb. Monte Jalabert, which is about 2.9 k's, 10.5%. About a nine minute. Could they break the nine minute barrier climb? Pantani did. Dylan Kronenwegen probably just asking, just one more day after this until the rest day, guys. And Jonas needing to defend on that pure watts per kilo test against Pagacha. But the typical break that we all expected did form. It formed with EF, with Israel represented, with Crone from Lotto, Woods, Fulsang, Paulus, all in there, all looking fine until we see Jonas gesturing to Benote to chase really hard when the gap was at 20 seconds and then bridging across on Geshka. And we see the reason for it. The TV cameras didn't really catch when he moved, but Pagacha has bridged to the breakaway with Wout Van Aert on his wheel. And Pagacha said in an interview afterwards that when the break had formed, Wout Van Aert jumped from the peloton and Pagacha was on his wheel and Wout got them separation across to the breakaway. So he says that Wout initiated it. And then when he saw that Jonas was behind, he just thought, well, I'll just keep putting the pressure on and he's got to chase me now. And you see the yellow jersey having to chase from behind at the start of this stage. So yeah, a bit of a chaotic start. Like I thought the break had gone and then there's GC action all of a sudden. So Pagacha clearly looking for any angle to take time at all because the two are very, very evenly matched uh, in the last few days on Alpe d'Huez and at the finish today. And a bit of a scare at the start. Yul Jensen and Bike Exchange were determined to get in this breakaway. And now other GC guys like Vlasov were thinking, oh, can I get into this breakaway? Pogacar attacks again. Apparently Thomas said afterwards that Pogacar was saying to Ineos that Jumbo Visma were on a bit of pressure. So he wanted Ineos to join in and help him in countering Wout and Jonas, but they didn't really, they didn't slip Peacock in the breakaway, and yeah, Pikachu almost keeps keeps the pressure on, a little bit strange, I mean, I guess Roglic and, and Benoit were behind, but now Koos is pulling Jonas with Pikachu fourth wheel, just trying to set a steady tempo to stop the attacks, Powers goes clear again with Yul Jens, and I think Schultz had made that original move, so guys who thought, okay, this is the break I've got to be in, they get in it, all happy days, they had to re-attack again, and some missed it, you see Soler here, is getting in this breakaway, I believe. And then you see Wout just a bit later getting on the radio and probably asking, like, can I let him go? Are we allowing UAE in the breakaway? Eventually, they did let Soler in the break. He got the break on the Puy Marie stage, and he was just going to be in the break for the stage win. It wasn't as a satellite rider or anything like that. So the pace relented in the GC group. Simon Geschke in the polka dot jersey uh, started to forge clear with Betiol on the wheel, multiple EF in, and the Peloton fanned out. And we eventually, maybe 30Ks, 40Ks later than expected, had our breakaway, a very strong one, with Matthews and I think Woods and Crone bridging across with Luis Leon Sanchez, who almost missed this move. Michael Matthews, very, very late, almost missed it. Same with, I think, Quinn Simmons with Malcolm Oliver Simmons in back-to-back breakaways. Gap goes out to seven minutes, and we largely had the stage we expected. Menkes was on uh, like 15 minutes on GC. He was the closest GC guy on the break. Israel with their numbers, Nalens and Fulsang and Woods were trying to play with the break a little bit, trying to make Martinez, who's not got no teammates in the break, close the gap here or there. Eventually, Quinn attacks with 57 Ks to go. They know that they don't want to go to the finish, some of these riders, with the better climbers in the group, with like a Leonard Kamner or a Martinez on great shape or a Betiol, and Bora have numbers too. And so Matthews tries to get ahead of it. And then we see here, despite having three riders in the group, EF and Israel miss the counter move across to Matthews with Groschartner, Krohn, and Luis Leon Sanchez. And so Bora, who did have three riders get in it, and Groschartner pulls sometimes, doesn't pull other times when he gets across to Matthews. But a brilliant move from Matthews a la Pedersen yesterday, but even earlier, narrowing this group down with now FDJ having to chase with Stefan Kung, poor Stefan Kung in the heat. And these four working pretty together. Betty Ol trying to take that gap from 43 to 22 on the last like 5k 4% climb. Now the peloton's on it. Roglic thinned the group down and even put Peacock under pressure, but he'd come back before the last climb. Crone had a mechanical, which maybe slowed this group down too. When they get to the climb with like a 23 second advantage, because I think Quinn Simmons did a huge lead out into it. And Michael Matthews drops Groschartner, drops Luis Leon Sanchez almost at 
the base. The man, if you watched the Vuelta last year closely, you know he was on an incredibly good level on steep, short climbs. Valdepenas de Jaén and Cullera just got unlucky against like Rogliches of this world. Berriol gets across to him that maybe spent too many bickies closing the 20-second gap, then getting across to him very, very quickly, then attacking him almost immediately. And it looked like, oh, Matthews, the quote-unquote sprinter, I mean, he's more than that as a rider, is gone. He wasn't. He came back to Bediol right at the end of the steep section and on the 4 to 5% section attacked him. A bit more power in the legs than Bediol and Matthews takes an unbelievable stage win, attacking at 56Ks, working in that breakaway, getting dropped by Bediol and then coming back to win the stage. Unreal win for him in bike exchange. Back in the GC group, Sepp Koos was pacing for Jonas, second wheel, but UAE have numbers, Micah and McNulty. Micah's good, and McNulty actually in particular, on these short, punchy climbs. McNulty can do a really good two-minute effort, and Jonas he's immediately got rid of Koos. Lushenko's dropped. We see that Pidcock's under pressure, and Micah does one last pull, as now a lot of the GC guys are dropped. It's just Ineos and Jonas left, with Bardet Quintana, uh, Vlasov Godou quickly does open the jersey and mass off the back before Pagacha attacks and settles into a very steady rhythm. Now, I know there's surges in his attack or in his effort today, but he didn't do like a stop-start track stand like I expected he would, sort of contour style. He almost tried to grind Jonas Vingegaard off the wheel. He did certainly do that to the Ineos guys, but Vingegaard was under no pressure. He always looked mouth closed at times. And despite these guys going quicker than Roglic in 2018, they were evenly matched, not a split second between them. So no time gains, no bonuses, and another impressive defense by Jonas Vingegaard. But the day was for Bike Exchange to now take their second stage win of the Tour. They've also got two second places, and Schultz was unlucky not to win his stage at Megev too. They are having a brilliant Tour de France. Tomorrow's the sort of stage where they got options too. Matthew's winning hit a Betty Pino Soler, Conrad Fulsang, Groschan, a Cam Nageshka, Menkes. Menkes moves up the GC considerably through that breakaway, the big mover into seventh, six minutes ahead of Mars, about six and a half ahead of Alexander Vlasov. Can he defend that lead for at least the top 10 again in the Pyrenees? We'll wait and see. Here's what Pagacha had to say after the stage. You actually did try early. Uh, we saw you at the front. Uh, there was a little game at uh, in the, f- the first uh, 15 kilometers. What was that all about? Yeah, it was a big break at the moment. And out of the city, we start climbing. Van Aert uh, tried to bridge and I followed. And then, yeah, it was a big gap. Uh, and I say, okay, they need to try to, to close. I accelerate a bit, uh, play games a little bit, but yeah, they have a too strong team. <laughs> Subscribe down below if you enjoyed the video. Tomorrow's another transition stage to Carcassonne before the rest day on Monday. Hopefully it's a cracker. I'll see you with the recap of that tomorrow. Ciao.